A lot of people can say they bought their dream car, but not a lot of people can say they actually built their dream car. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's smelly, oil and gas. But when you go on a race suit, it's, it's, it's fun. The noise, the, the adrenaline, smelling the rubber burning. Yeah, that's the part that I would never give up. That's the part I would never let go. That's why I would continue to do what I love and continue to race as long as I can. My name is Justin Campbell, and I drive a BMW E46 M3, and this is my story. There's something about a car that is, is a feeling that I never got from anything else before. Um, it just takes away all my frustration and I'm able to compose it into something I love to do, which is driving. My dad, he loved cricket and every in my family was landscaping. So there was no kind of racing at all, none. I had an uncle, Robert Cowanbach, who was probably the closest thing to racing, who would take me to rallies and stuff, but it is not like to say I had an uncle that did it or a cousin or aunt. I knew no one who did it, to be honest. No one personally. As a kid, I remember my dad taking us to my brother and I to Bush Park. I think we were about four years old. And the only car I remember coming home and talking about was Roger Skeets, Pugio at that time. That's the only car I remember at that time. And that was the first time I saw a race. And it was from that day I was hooked on motorsport. Never looked back since. Most drivers, they start from when they're seven or eight. I didn't have the opportunity till I had my own job. So that wasn't Sally out until I was about 16. It was actually my first car at meet. And also my first rallying and racing experience as well. Uh, when we purchased a BMW. When we were about 11, I had my first Toyota Starlet. Uh, it was a pure shell, bought it for like $300, no engine or anything like that, but that was my first car. And it was from there that I just kept building and building and building and building. And this is where I am now. The Starlet was the thing back in those days where everybody put it this way. When I was going to school at Lodge, there were three things I wanted. It was to finish school, go to Polytechnic, and have a really start at. That was my line of order. <laughs> the rally bug was always there. The reason I got into track racing and circuit racing is when we attempted to do our first event, again at 16, we were declined. They basically said I had no experience. And I kind of understand, well, how do you get experience if you don't start? But I never questioned it. And the next open thing was to go to Bush Park Circuit at that time. And I started circuit racing. Circuit racing, I, I always tell people I love rallying over circuit because it's more of a challenge. Um, you never know what your next corner is going to bring. You, and you're constantly being chased. Circuit racing is, I could drive behind you for two laps. I could read your game plan, what you're going to do, and then overtake your next lap. So it's kind of, it's like an easier way of maneuvering through a sport. And I, I always like to challenge the rallying. Carton is a, is a grassroots for racing. It, it teaches you about car control, one, how to remain calm and very to be very smooth and uh, tidy and also commitment as well. It's something I wish I started earlier and it's something I would encourage anyone who's looking to get into motorsport to start. A level that is not too, too expensive, so it's the right entry level to go into. So I always said that when my son gets old enough and he has a passion for cars, definitely he's going to start from a young age. When he was a baby, um, he was two weeks out of the hospital. I took him for the first drive in a race car. He did not freak out, cry anything like that, and we had a routine that every Saturday morning we would go for a little drive and come back. Even to the age that I put him in a car seat and just go for a drive and come back. Uh, funny enough is, the only thing I used to make him stop crying is when he made a car noise. So I suspect he has a passion for it, but who knows. After every race mate would say, man, are you going to rally? Are you going to rally? He was like, well, it's an expensive sport. I was like, I don't care, are you going to rally? Are you going to find a way to rally? And my way was always to be a Roger Skeet. That was always for me, to, to beat Roger Skeet. And it's funny enough, it's only like the other day, my, my mom and I were talking and she was like, you remember as a kid, you also say you want to ride a Roger Skeet and fit. I always said I want to build an injury for Roger Skeet too. I always used to say that. And now I'm racing with him and beating him now in Bill Joe. So it's kind of a, like, whoa, it's really happening. Pulling up to the event amongst the other drivers that I used to watch, I was watching prior to years on the sidelines. It made me feel like, yeah, Jess, you, you made it, but this is a real deal here. That alone and putting on the harness and the seat belts and the intercom and here and now again next to you, it was like, yeah, this this is your life here. I should be done doing this ever since.
2019 Rally Barbados. It was a year that we said, we want the car to be super reliable and we changed every part on the car to a brand new part. And every brand new part failed. And <laughs> I could not understand the daylights so why. But you know the old people go saying if it's not fixed or if it's not broken, don't fix it. I learned that mistake last year. But no, last year was, when I look back at it, it was, it was pure hype. It was pure hype for real. Preparing for a rally. Um, I get very, my parents, my mom, so I get kind of miserable. It's just me kind of like preparing and zoning out. So I kind of blank out everyone as a Romy. And then the nervous feeling, which is the best feeling before the actual race starts or the rally starts. And then the feeling when I'm actually in the car is like, I'm totally in a different zone altogether. That was a feeling I've never got from any other sport or any other hobby or anything like that before. The biggest challenge also was finding and making my name, uh, a family name and a household, and also to prove that, you know, I, I am worth of what I am and I could give back a lot more. And that is when I also had to look at it from a motorsport and locally as a different in terms of a brand. And I came up with CRT. And I guess it's like, it almost like a balance. So, okay, you, you got to drive, but what you do after you drive, how, how can I give back to benefit my sponsors? And how do you again fall in? And I started young when with no guidance. I was, I, what it was say was well, or very, very well. And I used to drive for the crowd. And that didn't get me too far. Um, I had a couple of accidents. And so after that, I, I, you know, I kind of changed up my driving style to be a lot more smoother now. Um, some people say, man, you're looking boring, I think, but it's not that. It's just that you're trying to be fast, just in a different style. So that is what I learned over the years. That's the, that's the magic and the trait and the balance I'm looking for it still. If I could go back to it again, with the knowledge I have now, the maturity I have now, it's something that I would do all over again, but in the same style. Same raw style, they had a suit that was second hand, a helmet that was second hand, you know, it's like you piece together the equipment and you, and you build and grow as, 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 you, as you develop. I was 17 years old, no, 16 years old when you say that you wanted to rally. And I had my style to start at that time with a 4G in it. And I went and I purchased some roll cage pipe from Structural Systems. And it was in, well, the garage didn't look like this, but it was in this garage here. And my dad came down here and night to showed me and was like, well, you got roll cage pipe? I was like, well, I want to start rallying. And, you know, this is start. And he left the same thing, but very quiet. I couldn't understand what happened. And then the next day, my mom said, uh, you know your dad don't really want you racing, right? Because it's dangerous. Later on that night, he called me up and said, well, look, I found something. If you really want to take this sport serious, um, I think this is the way to go. And we started with a BMW E30 at that time. And that is when the BMW legacy started. After that, it was always, I mean, he had plenty, plenty, plenty of BMWs after that. And we had a Z3 M Coupe, we had an E36 M3. It was just a roll of BMWs after that thing, E46 M3. So I guess gradually I had no choice but to come into it. Um, when I was younger, the cars that we had, I, I had like three, four frustrating years because the cars never worked properly. And then it was always hard to get parts. And I was like, you know what, if you had to, I'd have started it because so much further. But no, I don't regret it. And the reason I said that as well, about eight years ago, I had a terrible accident in St. Peter. Rally Barbados, this is the BMW of Justin Campbell in Germany. Um, I hit a pole head on, and if it was not a BMW and a Toyota started, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you all right now. So, from then is when I appreciated the decision he made, and I never looked back since. Never did. What you have here is a BMW E46 M3. It uh, comes with a 3.2 motor. We've got slight modifications to it. We also have it fitted with a sequential gearbox and then pro flex suspension, big brakes. But what you see here took at least about five to six years of development um, because I've been mean, getting like each year we buy piece out of piece out of piece and kind of put the puzzle together. But we still got a lot uh, further way to go in terms of development, in terms of suspension. And I guess because every year as I get or my driving improves, then I have to adapt the car around my style as well. So that's really challenges, but I believe this year is going to be a promising year. When I get in, there's, there's only room for myself. It's set up just for me, perfectly for just for me. It's almost like when I get in here, it's like, okay, this is my little dome for the day. That is what I love about it. So that first step in, because it's almost like I'll crawl in and then sit back in it. It's only like the night before event or like rally bar, so I get nervous, not necessarily in the morning. 
again, what I do is get really quiet, very, very, very quiet. And my team knows me so well. They know when they turn up not to ask me anything because it's like, all right, just in his mode. You know, once I put on my headphones and I walk away from people, they're like, yeah, he getting in his zone. Maybe just not disturbing. Again, a lot of friendships and a lot of connections and networking on and off the track. What I've found is that there are a lot more people watching Rally Barbados and rallying in the whole now and there were before. Some people may say against that, but it's because rallying as a whole is like a line, it's a vibe. And that is what we as island, we as a small island, we love that. And even to see that it's attracting from overseas drivers constantly coming in every year to the point that they're actually leaving their cars here for the year. It, it, it speaks a lot about that and what Rally Barbados and the whole organizers that are doing there is a fantastic job and putting Barbados on the map and also motorsport on the map as well and I will tell them to continue doing it. What if they are doing, just continue doing what they're doing. Saul called me, I said, was like, you hear Ken Bok driving? I was like, huh? Yeah, Ken Bok coming Rally Barbados. And all I tell, all we talking about last night is like, I just want to beat him in one stage. I can say beat Ken Bok. I just want one stage. <laughs> but no, the mere fact that you got someone like Ken Bok that has a big following, you can, you can imagine the, the attention and media traction that that's going to bring to Barbados and also Rally Barbados. So, that was a very, very fantastic call from the organizers and whoever pulled that shot. Fantastic on your work, good job. My expectations for Rally Barbados this year is to definitely finish the rally and give my navigator ear him what he always promised him for the last few years, which is a podium finish. Um, that is your right plan and also to win my group. I mean, that is, that is anyone's plan or anyone's aim, any driver's aim, but the first, I just want to finish and be reliable and then anything else can happen after that. Erin and I, we go way back from secondary school. We were best friends from first form or second form. And our friendship started that we used to fight every day. But next day we'd come back to school like nothing happened. And our relationship started then and our friendship started then. And I remember always telling that, you know, one day when I rally, you know, you can get you navigate for me. Um, that, that only started late three years ago, two years ago. Um, but no, it's, it's a fantastic bond we have because we understand one another, we understand the chemistry on and off the track as well. So it's something that helps me a lot as well as a driver. I kind of like look at Lewis Hamilton and what he's doing for Formula One. All that image he brought into Formula One changed it, the whole brand, the whole spike. It's almost what I'm doing on here because when you go riding on here, it's baggies and slippers. I'm like, trying to change it now, gain a little bit. So me and Aaron are working on that slowly. <laughs> For this car, every year I would, or every other year, I try to pull it right down to the shell and pull it right back up. It's almost like a puzzle. I love it because it's reliable, it's attractive and appealing, and especially to the kids. Kids love it. It's okay to build your own car. You build it around yourself, yes, but when you have something that comes from a factory, it's like, okay, this stuff is actually engineered for this. So even sitting in it feels like, okay, I'm invisible in this. I'm, I feel safe. I feel like I could do anything and nothing would happen. So if I had to swap cars or ask for drive, it would be an R5 probably now. Chase your dreams. Don't let the financial aspect deter you. I mean, that's the first thing people tell you, it's expensive. So that's a negative, don't, don't look at the negative, you know? Motorsport, you don't have to get a fast, fast car out of the box. Get something that you're comfortable with, something you can afford. And start small, always remember that, start small, start really simple package of a good car with suspension brakes. Don't worry about speed, that will come after. I just get seat time and practice. I mean, some drivers are like, you know, they just drive and don't really interact with the crowd or stuff like that. No, that's not me. I try to get that back right through. Even the kids going in the cars, people sitting on the cars, that's, that's just me. So that people get that first hand experience of what is really like. Over the years, I've been mean, trying to do that and give back so much to the youth, especially when I started a rare project with Rally Around the Youth. And it was to allow people or allow young children or young, even adults to get close to someone they could relate to, someone that could guide them and say, well, look, this is the way to start and you know, this is the way how to fulfill. Even from simple things, I mean, randomly I get parents or people call me and say, well, look, my son's birthday is this weekend. Is it possible you could bring him up there, take a drive? I don't know these people. They say, yeah, sure because I knew how it felt as a kid. Growing up, men, Maps College used to have their fears. Guaranteed, I would say for that event once a year just to get a driving different rally cars. And that feeling lasts for probably the rest of the year until the next time.